Hello and welcome to the training for the new production scheduling cloud application. This is the third of 12 lessons. The objectives for this lesson are to learn about the key data elements from supply chain execution and SEM common that are relevant for production scheduling. To understand how descriptive flex fields on work definition operations and extensible flex fields on items can be used to model customer specific attributes and which data must be maintained within production scheduling itself. Let's start with the SEM cloud data elements. This slide provides an overview of the various data elements from SEM cloud that are used in production scheduling. Note that in this lesson, we only touch upon key properties of these data elements. For more comprehensive information, please review the documentation and training lessons available for the various SEM Cloud modules and work areas. Now let's go over these individually. Within setup and maintenance work area, you can define customer specific attributes, which can then be assigned to items and to work definition operations. And in production scheduling, these attributes can then be used to drive sequencing decisions and to support schedule analysis in the schedule views. From PIM, Product Information Management, the item catalog and item categories are used when defining the scope of a schedule. And of course, the items used by the work orders that have to be scheduled are retrieved into production scheduling. from supply chain execution, work definition. Work definitions and associated resources are read into production scheduling. From supply chain execution, work execution, the resource capacity and resource availability are brought into production scheduling where they serve as constraints. And of course, the work orders themselves that must be scheduled are read in as well. from inventory management, various supplies and demands are brought into PS to ensure a consistent inventory picture. And finally, from order management, sales orders are brought into production scheduling where they influence when the supplying work orders will be scheduled. Now let's have a look at a few specific data elements that are set up and configured in supply chain execution. Here we see the key properties of a work center resource that determine the capacity and availability, which will be considered in production scheduling during schedule generation. The number of units available by default and by shift resource calendar exceptions and the utilization and efficiency percentages are among the relevant properties that are used. Work definitions define the manufacturing process for a product, the necessary operations, which resources are used, and which materials or components are consumed. A key property to specify is whether a particular operation resource shall be scheduled or not. Only those operation resources with the scheduled flag set to yes will show up in the schedule views. In situations where a group of simultaneous resources is defined for an operation resource sequence, then exactly one of those resources must be declared a principal resource. Also note that if a single member of a group of simultaneous resources has the scheduled flag set to yes, then the principal resource must also be a scheduled resource. In addition, all scheduled members of a simultaneous resource group will be scheduled in PS for the duration that is specified on the principal resource. It is important to define alternate resources where applicable. This is done on work definition operation resource. Production scheduling will make use of those alternate resources when needed and may offload an operation from a given resource to an alternate. 
note that offloading will not happen out will only happen outside the fixed time fence and if the walk order has not been transacted yet. Now let's review the role that user-defined attributes play in scheduling. User-defined attributes, of course, vary by industry vertical, individual customer, and even specific facility within a customer. For example, in food and beverages, different attributes are relevant than in metals fabrication and processing. The attribute definition and maintenance occurs via descriptive flex fields for work definition operations and extensible flex fields for items. Within production scheduling, these attributes then solve two purposes. They are used to define changeover rules and user-defined sequences, which drive sequencing decisions during schedule calculation and make sure that resource capacity is consumed correctly and they support schedule analysis in the available schedule views. In the following section, we will review the core setup steps for descriptive flex fields on work definition operations. To create user-defined attributes, navigate to the setup and maintenance work area. Select set up manufacturing and supply chain materials management in the context switcher LOV, search for and launch task, manage work setup descriptive flex fields, and then define flex fields for work definition operations together with their validation value sets. Finally, the newly defined flex fields need to be deployed for use in supply chain execution. Once the descriptive flex fields are defined and deployed, they can be assigned to work definition operations. Within a work definition, edit the operation of interest and select a context segment in the additional information section. After a context is selected, the contained attributes become visible and attribute values can be assigned. Next, we will review the core setup steps for extensible flex fields for items. Again, navigate to the setup and maintenance work area. Now select setup product management in the context switcher LOV and search for manage item attribute groups. Then complete the following tasks. Manage item attribute groups and attributes, manage item classes, and deploy item extensible flex fields. Again, once the extensible flex field is defined and deployed, the underlying attributes can be maintained on each item of the respective item class to which the attribute group was assigned. Now in the last topic of this lesson, we will outline the data elements that must be maintained within production scheduling itself. Note that all data that is managed directly within production scheduling is maintained by scheduling organization. Manufacturing and item attribute groups must be specified so that production scheduling knows which attributes to retrieve once the underlying attributes are available inside production scheduling, which is the case after a scheduling organization refresh has been run, they can get assigned to resources and then used to define changeover rules or user-defined sequences. Note that it is necessary to specify resource parameters if they shall be constrained, since the default will be for resources to be unconstrained. On the other hand, it is optional to define resource groups. In subsequent lesson number four, all these data elements will be covered in more detail. 
to summarize this lesson, we learned about various data elements from supply chain execution and SEM common that are used by production scheduling, how descriptive flex fields and extensible flex fields are used to provide customer specific attributes for use in scheduling, and that certain data has to be managed by scheduling organization within production scheduling itself.